Hi friends and welcome to Coffee with My Sunshine. Today's video is going to be a part of the Girls Can Use Power Tools Challenge and this is hosted by Natalie from Design to the Nines. I am going to be joining this awesome group of really talented ladies but instead of it being a regular playlist it's going to be a hop so when you are done with my video click on my description box and you will find the link to the next friend that is joining in on this challenge and you will be taken to her video and then so on and so forth but we are not going to tell you who you are hopping to next so it will all be a surprise so for my project i wanted to build a planter for my back porch and we're going to be using this barn wood that is from my parents property and we are going to start by cutting the boards down to size and because this board is a little bit bigger we had to um, make a cut and then flip the board and then finish the cut on the other side and if you're interested in building one of these i will have the measurements listed in my description box i actually got the look of this planner like the idea of it from i don't know if you guys are familiar with ashley from uh, till vacuum do us part she has a really fun cleaning channel um, but they built one of these planters or two of these planters actually um, very similar to this one in one of their last videos i will link her channel below in the description box if you guys are interested our sizes were a little bit different than she had on her planters because you know we had to make it to fit our area <laughs> So after we cut the boards to size, we just pre-drilled holes so that we could um, countersink the screws because on the corners here, we're going to be putting um, kind of like edge piece pieces on the corners. So we wanted them to lay flat when we screw those in. And for these, we just did two screws for each board. So some of this my husband helped me with because the screws weren't going in as easy as I wanted them to. <laughs> and I totally forgot when I was sanding the outside coming up shortly, I forgot to sand the inside. So I will be doing that later. And here it is all stacked up. We haven't put it together yet, um, but this is what I was showing you. Like the edge pieces are kind of staggered or alternated. So because I knew I was going to stain it, I wanted to just give it a light sanding because we liked the, <laughs> there's a bunch of dust in there, <laughs> um, because we liked the um, rough sawn look of it and you know, just the imperfections, but I wanted to sand it down just a little bit to um, get it so that it would take some of the stain. And I think it's really pretty wood. That's why I like using it. We have a whole bunch of it, so we have a lot of projects that we're gonna have to make. <laughs> so my husband took over sanding while I finished cutting the edge pieces because we were running out of daylight and wanted to get this project done today. So these are those edge pieces that I was talking about that um, the reason why we had to countersink those screws, but these ones, I kind of wanted the screws to um, stick out just a little bit because I thought it just kind of added to the rusticness of it. And we used um, two different types of wood. I think we I think we used um, cedar on the edge pieces. So, and we flipped them over so that they were on the rougher side. I didn't realize that until we were halfway done. So I'm just giving them a light sanding as well. 
and which I should have done before I put the screws in, but that's okay. I'm just going to be using this fruit wood stain. I had a lighter stain, but I couldn't find it. Um, I should have waited until I got a place to order for some um, the exact stain that I wanted because it didn't really turn out the color that I was hoping for. But with everything being shut down um, and not being able to go to the stores like normal, I just I was super excited to get this project finished. Oh yeah, don't forget to use gloves because you will regret it if you don't because your fingers will be stained for days. So I just, I normally just use a sock to apply stain. I just think it goes on better. And after I applied the fruit wood stain, it looked really, really orange to me. Like I said, I wanted it to be like a lighter, more natural stain. So I thought, okay, maybe if I layered some dark walnut on top, it would take down some of the orange, but still give it like that um, rustic wood look. And it just turned out a little bit darker than I was hoping for. So I don't know if you guys have any tips on how to, I don't know, apply a lighter stain over a darker stain. I don't even know if that's possible to lighten it up, but anyway. I am happy with how it turned out. I think it's really pretty and it will work great when I can get some flowers. <laughs> like I said, everything's closed down, so um, I can't really get out to the stores to, to get the flowers that I want. Plus, it's a little bit early to plant them anyway, but it's ready for when I can get them. So just so you get the effect, I wanted to show you what um, flowers would look like in there. So don't forget to check out my description box and click on the next video link so you can hop on over to see what the next project is. I hope you all are staying safe, happy, and healthy, and I'll see you next time. Bye!